Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We are so excited to have you join us with the Three Wives Empowering Lives. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to tune in. We are super excited to be talking on a subject that I think every mom can relate to is stress and how us moms feel like we have to do all the things and we don't realize the impact it can make not only on our own health, but also just it's like a domino effect with our family as well. And so we hope that you learned something. If you have questions, we always have the chat room open. So feel free to plug in there. And also we want you to realize that we are not experts. We are not doctors. We are not claiming that what we recommend to like curb those, you know, stress habits or um, being able to give you supplements that might be able to help it. This is just something that works for us. And so we're simply sharing it with what we do and what we have found over the years that each of us have been moms. I've been 11 years, Brit's 11, and your oldest is 10, Deb, correct? Yeah. So we've all been, we've been there for a long time. And I think it's something that is super relatable, especially in the early years. Um, and then I find that it shifts for us, for me personally, it shifted into different stress as my kids got older. So in the beginning of stages of being a mom, you have the infancy, you've got to learn how to all the nursing and around the clock of them waking up and all that. And then it shifts now. I feel like it's just their schedules and being able to be okay saying no and not being at every single thing. I mean, there's parties galore. And so we now just pick and choose what parties we're specifically going to attend to. And there's just so many different things to be attended to that it's really honing in on what's your top priorities and what is going to, what's going to be exciting for you to rather than be a chore to attend. So we hope that you learn from this and we're going to be touching on just a multitude of different topics of in relation to stress and how they pertain to us physically, emotionally, and the chemical da damage that it does to our bodies. And so we hope that you can learn from this. And if you have questions again, reach out. Um, I actually did a little bit of research on just what Americans are stress about these days? Like, what is it right now that us as not just moms, but just as husbands and, you know, families, there's so much stress and so much pressure on all of us these days, uh, living the American dream, having these jobs that people are working around the clock, not having downtime, not getting rest, not taking care of their family. And when they think they're taking care of the family, because they're working around the clock, they're not getting the time with their family. So it's all just like this you know, hot mess basically. And I actually was surprised by this statistic. I thought it would be higher. Of course, it's not, I mean, I don't know how well in depth this statistic was, you know, studied, but it said 63% of Americans are stressed. I would have thought it was more than that. And I do believe it's more than that because I feel like nine out of 10 people I talk to are completely stressed with their lives. And so I would say it's more like an 80 to 85% in my head. But um, so things that, I know that personally stress, like the first five things that I think of and that I actually found be really true when I was doing a bit of homework on this of what things people do get stressed out about is, or what they first go to, like what's your, when you first get stressed out, what are you ultimately going to first? Like what's your first um, way to cure it or help it or make you just like kind of make it go away for a little bit. Mine was always caffeine. And so I would just live off of caffeine before I discovered it after Jenna Gerbs. And I know Britt will go a little bit into that, but I would go and grab the caffeine and I'd be having caffeine around the clock and caffeine. It's okay in moderation, but caffeine's really, really bad for our body. So it also like ups your heart rate. And so it can cause even lead to heart attacks and lead to really, really toxic, you know, detriments on your body. So caffeine being the first thing, complaining, like people that are stressed out, they're complaining because they're stressed out and they're not happy where they're at. They're not happy with, you know, they're complaining about everything. They're not seeing the gratitude in their lives and the things they should be grateful for. So they're constantly complaining. And I know for myself, when I'm stressed out, I'll fall into that trap of like, oh my gosh, like this isn't going right. And why isn't this going right? And it's all because of me. It's because of how I'm controlling it. Um, another thing that, um, was stuck out to me was obsessing over things you can't change. So when you're stressed out and you're just, you know, run ragged and you're so frustrated with the situation, then you're just keep complaining about the situation that you can't change. Ultimately you can't change it. It takes steps and it takes, you know, small baby steps to be able to swap that mindset and to be able to 
live it a little differently, but to be obsessing over the change, um, things that you can't change that you think you can't change, but you ultimately can change them. And then you're automatically going to start eating that. So I know if, when I was, and I still do this, if I'm super stressed, I'll grab foods that are easier to eat and they're more toxic. And so you're kind of feel feeding that void and it's not void, but you're feeding that stress by eating something that's not good for you, but it's making you feel good at the time because you're stressed out and you just want this, you know, to feel good. So when you're eating horrible food, especially when you're eating it, when you're stressed, because stress is already taking a toll on your body and then you're eating toxic food on top of it. And then it affects your sleep. And I know this is like probably my number one is aside from caffeine is the sleep that it affects when I get stressed out. Um, my, it have a hard time like actually getting sound sleep. And so if any of you guys can relate to any of those, I would love to hear feedback in the chat of what would you say are your triggers for stress? Like what are the top things that you guys are doing? And are you aware that you're doing it? Cause I feel like I wasn't aware of it for a very long time. And then you start to notice your triggers when you're stressed. So just really good to take note of what sets you off when you're stressed how can you reshift that to relieve the stress and then maybe not having the, you know, the things that are going to make you eat things when you're not, when you are stressed out. So having healthy snacks around, like having like, I love hummus. And so if I have hummus and avocados, I'm going to more likely grab that than if I had a bag of chocolate chip cookies on the counter when I'm stressed, if I didn't have the chocolate chip cookies, I wouldn't be tempted. So just being able to set, your, your, set yourself up for success. Um, another thing that I think people don't realize is, um, the toll it really takes on your body. I've talked about it a little bit. I know Britt will get into this and as well, Deb, but it really, it it can create cancer cells because stress just really deteriorates your body. And so it's not only like stressing you out physically, but it's also taking a toll on your body and on your health. And you'll notice that you might be more obese, not necessarily like showing it externally, but internally you're going to be more obese because of how you're feeling and because of what you're putting in there. And so internally you're going to be having fat cells that are creating obesity and super toxic cells inside your body. So it's really good to notice that you don't have to be obese on the outside to be obese on the inside. And I think a lot of people think, oh, so-and-so's fit because they're thin or the way they look. And that's not always the case. There's plenty of thin people that are toxic on the inside. And so that's really something I think people don't hone in on is the stress that takes a toll on that. Um, and then it's going to make you be unhealthy. As we've already talked about, it's going to make you chug caffeine around the clock. It's going to make you grab snacks. It's going to make you get less sleep. And sleep is probably one of the most important things for your body. Aside from nutrition, like sleep is really important for your brain and for everything else. And so just being able to create that balance. And then you'll also know, I know for me, I will get skin breakouts if I'm super stressed out. I know Britt's gone through this with me. Like I'll get legit skin outbreaks. And it's really like, it's the first few times I was like, what is this? Um, but it's just your body saying like, stop, like stop doing all the things and take care of your body and fuel me properly. So, uh, let's see. So a few things that I personally find that have helped me to release all the stress and to just alleviate stuff is first of all, say no. Like, don't feel like you have to do all the things. Um, we were at the pool the other day, and one of the moms was saying how, because we always go to concerts in the parks, that's a little local thing. And she was saying how she felt like she misses out because they don't go as a family. And I was like, oh, no, just enjoy the time at home. Like, you don't have to feel like you're missing out. If you don't want to go, don't go. And she's like, well, but then I feel like it's the FOMO. Like, that, I had heard that phrase a while ago. I was like, what is FOMO? It's fear of missing out. And to me, it's like, it's all, like, I re, I'm actually reading a book called, it's called The Joy in the Sands, J-O-M-O, J-O-M-O. And so I was like, well, turn it around. Instead of the fear of missing out, like, be grateful that you don't have to feel like you have to be at this one extra thing. Like, take in the family time that you guys get to have at home. Your husband's been at work all day. Enjoy the family time and consider it a blessing. You don't have to be there. So I feel like instead of society saying you have to be at everything or you're not, you know... The, you know, it is sad. Like sometimes there's things where you won't wish you're invited to. I get that, but consider it a blessing. Like it's more time to do what, you know, maybe go get a pedicure for yourself or a massage or go take care of yourself and not having to be at all the things. And also it goes for not just like being at stuff, but also taking care of your house. Like I know for me, my house is a not like it's a full-time job. And if I didn't just stop 
it would, it's nonstop. And so I feel like being able to say, okay, my dishes are done. I'm done with that chore. Like I can take a break and move along and not have to worry about every other little detail. I mean, there's always going to be dusting. There's always going to be mopping. There's always going to be vacuuming. There's always going to be laundry. And to be able to just stop and be like, okay, I'm not going to do that right now. I got the basics done and then move along. So a few things just really quick that I want to share. And then I'll leave the other gals on is adaptogens are a game changer. Like if you're not doing adaptogens or you're not familiar with adaptogens, study them. I know Britt will touch on this, so I don't want to take too much time on it, but look them up. And if you want to have questions, reach out to one of us and we will make sure to get them in your hands. They're amazing and they really help release stress. And so I typically take it in the morning. You can take it in the evening too. So if you're feeling like your brain won't shut off, which happens, I know a lot to us girls, is take the adaptogens and then just lay down and let your body and your brain rest. And they're just amazing. Another thing, obviously prayer meditating is key. Like just letting your brain be quiet and being still is super, super vital. Yoga. I love yoga. I didn't used to like yoga. I used to think, Oh, this is a waste of my time. It's not exercise. And then the more you do it, you realize the power of stretching and just letting your body just be like at ease and typically like 30 to 40 minutes. You don't have to do the whole class if you don't want to do like an hour. And then exercising, just getting your body moving, exercising, doing something. And it doesn't have to be a hardcore workout, but just that's a great way to release stress is just or release stress is just to get your body moving. And 15, 20 minutes, if you can't get in a half hour, just to get that blood pressure up. So anyways, that is what my takeaways are with stress. I think this is something all of us moms are relating to. And I feel like it's not talked about. I feel like people think they have to do all this stuff. And then you're not seeing the flip side of people that are in fact struggling with it. I know for me personally, it took a long time for me to be okay saying no and being able to know that my time to protect our time and not to be at every single thing. Kids activities, my kids get one activity. So they get to pick one cho- one activity they want to be part of and we don't do anything outside of that. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to the beautiful Deb who's going to talk about the emotional effects of stress. So thank you. Oh, such goodness, such goodness. Let me kind of get configured here, guys. Okay. So I never knew what FOMO meant. That's kind of a game changer to me. I feel like I'm living in the 80s a little bit, but I love the transition, Becca, that you had provided of bringing your life to from a FOMO state to a JOMO state and really reevaluating that. I have to say, in thinking about emotional stress, I feel like a lot of this comes down to what we've been talking about since we've started doing these webcasts, which is really thinking, encouraging yourself to think outside of what is normal, what is what the societal norm tells you, because that's really what it comes down to, you guys, is just being able to really evaluate what's going on based off of your own circumstances with your own life. You are the best advocate for your own family. So what, what you know, seeing the busyness of what goes on in other people's lives isn't necessarily what is the right way to live for you. And it's probably not even the right way for them to live. So Um, You know, one thing that I've noticed just as a side note before I get into emotional stress is have you guys found when you take your kids to the park um, or you take them out to, you know, meet some friends or something like that. I have some some friends that um, really are big advocates of being involved in everything with their kids when it comes to sports, when it comes to different camps. And I think all of those things are so good and I commend them and I think it's so I think it's so great to be able to involve your kids in so many different things. But the other thing that I've noticed is that they're balls of stress, right? Because they're in clubs with one of their kids and they're in a, you know, they're in something with another one of their kids. And I think that at the end of the day, it really comes down to balance and just like you said, Becca, being able to say no. So when I'm looking at emotional stress and when I really started um, putting this together, I broke this down into six different things that really have enabled me to focus in on what is causing the emotional stress that I go through and that our patients go through and then being able to put into perspective what are some solutions to each of these things. Now, as a side note, a lot of you know this, but my husband's a chiropractor and local health expert. So he treats the body um, and enables the body of people that come in very stressed out, whether it's chemical, physical, emotional, enables them to function properly and to be able to enable the brain to body flow to continue so that a lot of those stresses are then released. 
the number one cause of misalignment in the spine is emotional stress, believe it or not. We see people that come in from bad car accidents. We see people that come in from a lot of sports injuries and things like that. But the emotional stress by far takes the biggest toll. We do something called thermographic imaging in our office where we literally run this, this um, infrared scanner up the base of somebody's back. We do that every time they come in before their adjustment so that we can measure nerve pressure. And they could come in feeling super great, but that scan does not lie. And we can tell that there's a lot of emotional stress in their lives because it sends their body out of alignment. So the one thing that I want to talk with you about is stress. What, what is it exactly? What is the emotional stress and what's causing it? Generally, when you think about the things that lead you to a lot of emotional stress, it is an addiction, believe it or not, to anxiety, to overwhelm, to chaos. Think about that, you guys, that the emotional stress that we live in is generally stress that is not caused by what's going on right now. It is fearing or being anxious about or being nervous about something that hasn't even happened yet, right? So in our mind, we're sitting there going, okay, well, what if, what if this happens or based off of this, this is going to happen. It's things that haven't even occurred yet. So the number one thing that I would say is be very clear on the events that have shaped the feelings that you're feeling right now that are leading to that stress and that overwhelm and that anxiety, because a lot of that is not living in the moment. A lot of that is living in the future. So you've got to let that go. There was a really great book. All of us girls, all three of us on are being coached by or have been coached by Jeffrey Combs, who I'm a big fan of. And he has um, opened up my eyes to this book by David Hawkins, which is phenomenal. It's letting go. And I read just a couple pages of that book every single day. Everybody has, no matter what your childhood was growing up, you've got feelings that you're establishing now that are attached to past events that have shaped you to no fault of your own, but it's a matter of acknowledging what those feelings are and letting, releasing the emotions that are attached to those behaviors. Okay, so be very clear about those events. Forgive yourself. Forgive those people who are affiliated with those negative circumstances in your life and let it go and really over the course of time, if you do this little by little and make very deliberate attempts every single day to just live in the present, don't think about the future, right? And I'm going to bring this back to um, scripture right now too, but Jesus tell, tells us, do not worry about tomorrow. Think about today. Do I not take care of the birds? Do I not ensure that they're fed every day? Do you not think that you're more important than the birds? Okay. And I'm going to talk about the spiritual aspect of this in just a couple minutes, but um, just Enable yourself to be very deliberate about letting go of the past, forgiving, and living in the present. Um, my doorbell's ringing right now, and there's no one home, so I'm hoping this is not a really good package that we need to have delivered. Um, the, number, the, number, the other thing that I wanted to, number two, reevaluate your surroundings. Think about the people that you spend the most, the most amount of time with, whether in person or connecting, over the phone or through different different areas of your life outside of your immediate family. Then I want you to write down the five names of those people, the people that you currently spend the most amount of time with outside of your family. I want you to think about each of those five names and I want you to think, does this person bring me joy? Does this person add value to my life? Does this per person speak truth to me with grace? Do they, do they enable me to up my game? The two girls that I'm looking at right now, Brittany and Becca, fulfill all of those things. These girls enable me to want to be a better person in every aspect of my life. We're just like, I really do call them my sisters from another mister because I feel like they, they speak to me, they speak truth, they call me out, they empower me, they make me want to be better. So who are those five people? If those five people, or if one or two or three or four of those people do not fulfill that, you guys, I want you to cross their names off the list. Okay, I'm not telling you to defriend them. I'm not suggesting that. But I want you to reevaluate the people that you are spending the most amount of time with. If there are people on that list that don't bring you absolute joy, that don't support you, that don't empower you, if they're constantly speaking negative into your life, if they're criticizing all of these things, they're not in alignment with where you're going. I want you to cross their name off and I want you to write in the name of somebody that you're committed to becoming closer with that does fulfill the good things, that does enable you to up your game. So that now you're left with a list of five people that really speak truth, <clears throat> excuse me, really speak truth into your life. And those are the five people that you are going to commit to being around more often. 
having a weekly phone call with. Maybe you're, maybe it's somebody you don't even know yet and you're going to reach out to them and just let them know. I really admire your work. Or would you be willing to give me 10 minutes to be able to talk and kind of talk through your goals and your dreams and see if they can hold you accountable to those things. So that would be the second thing. The third thing, establish your routine. I know with three little kids at homeschool and running multiple businesses, this is sometimes what I feel like, right? So you've got to be able to set a routine up every morning. When I get up in the morning, now it might switch depending on, I mean, I've got some 3 a.m. days. I'm not advocating that at all. Um, where I go to bed at three o'clock in the morning, it's, it's kind of crazy, but there are times that I wake up earlier. I might wake up a little bit later, but every single morning I'm doing a gratitude while I'm lying in bed before I, my feet even touch the ground. I am getting my coffee and I'm reading my scripture or my devotional, uh, reading or some sort of empowering book for 15 to 20 minutes every single day. Every day, without fail, those are the things I'm doing. It just sets the standard for me. That sets my healthy foundation. At that point, I feel like I can take on the world. I'm opening up my planner, going through my to-do list, and I'm starting to check things off. Once my kids are awake, um, at that point, we you know, do school, we have breakfast, we do prayer time together, and all of those good things. So establish a routine. Number four is to get organized. Um, what you're doing by living in disorganization, and I can speak to this because I am like the worst. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was the worst. I've since I'm in recovery for this. By living in a state of disorganization, you're perpetuating your overwhelm cycle. So you've got to stop it. You've got to let go emotionally, but look around and don't get overwhelmed with, you know, your whole house looking like a disaster. If you have little kids running around, it's going to be crazy. At some point, you've got to just be okay with where you are, like Becca said, the dishes are done. I'm moving on to my next thing, but you, you could drive yourself crazy being in your house, cleaning up room after room. But I want you to look at one room at a time. What can I let go of? Get, I know Brittany is a huge advocate of this too. Get trash bags together. You guys dump the stuff that doesn't bring you joy. Because if you're living in disorganization around you physically, you're living in disorganization up here. You're now not able to produce. You're living in a constant state of overwhelm and anxiety. You've got to let it go and stop the cycle. So I would encourage you, get a, go to Target if you don't have them. Get a ton of trash bags. Start dumping the junk. Just going through, I'm looking around my um, bedroom right now, and it's so much less. There's so much less clutter than there was before, but I'm sitting there going like, yep, yeah, I could get rid of that. I could get rid of that. And just get rid of it. Somebody else, bring it to Goodwill. Um, and somebody else is going to benefit from that and could really utilize that. So get organized. If it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. The other, um, the number five that I want to talk about, I've got two more here, is financial. Okay, so financial, we're not talking necessarily about financial stress specifically in this, but I think financial affects all of the stresses that each of us are talking about. There is, um, there have been a lot of statistics in terms of what number what, what number would be the magic number in terms of income that would ease a lot of the emotional stressors for a family in any given month? And that number is right around $500 a month. If you have not seen Three Wives Empowering Lives, if you haven't seen us talk about our residual income, go back and watch that on any one of our YouTube channels. That is a really, really powerful uh, message because if you are looking for a way to be able to alleviate a lot of the emotional stress and a lot of your family stress comes from finances, we have, I feel like we've, our, our industry, our business, our mindsets have been catapulted as a result of saying yes to this opportunity through the products that we all utilize and through this lifestyle that we all adhere to. So if that's you, and if you feel like I'm speaking to you and your heart's beating super fast, go back and look at that residual income because I'm telling you, you guys, it is a possibility. Um, the people that might say no to you, those might be people that you need to cross out that list that I talked about earlier. But the, um, the possibility of this really is endless, and it's something that we're all just so passionate about. The last thing that I want to dig into or that I want to talk about is the spiritual aspect of it. Now, we are all very clear about our faith. This may not apply to you and that's okay, but whatever your spiritual um, habits are, or maybe you don't have one right now, for us, we are all um, Christian women. We're very clear about that. But one thing, if this does speak to you, I would suggest for emotional stress that you lean on the Lord. And what that looks like for me is spending time in scripture every day. So whether that is through 
um, devotional reading, whether that is through, I mean, I'm opening up my Bible every single day, whether that's for a couple of minutes or whether it's doing a Bible study with my kiddos. We're doing personal, just one-on-one -on -one time with me and the Lord, but I'm doing that every day. And then one thing that has really helped me, I did this actually through my, each of my home births where I had these um, scripture affirmation cards written down on little postcards and I would just kind of go through them as I needed to. But write down, it, write down verses that encourage you. And if the Bible is daunting, reach out to any one of us and we can definitely help you with that. But there, it's just so relevant, you guys, because some of the scriptures that I have written down are do not be anxious about anything. That's from Philippians 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. That's from John 14. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not fade. That's from Isaiah. Cast your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. That's from 1 Peter. So do you see the relevance of all of these things and how they can play into emotional stress? I'd really encourage you just to find a couple of scripture verses that are relevant to you and write them down so that you've got those, whether you take them on a wall or take them next to your desk or really um, meditate on those before you go to bed at night or when you wake up in the morning. That's a really phenomenal way to start your day. And over the course of time, you're going to be able to play these things over and over in your mind and just recite them. And it's going to bring you peace through that. Um, the last thing is create, and this is kind of, it goes in part with the spiritual side of it, but I've got playlists that I listen to when I start feeling stressed out. And one is called Gratitude Jam. So it's music, whether it's Christian music or whether it's secular music, that just helps me to be able to... Um, alleviate a lot of the stress in my mind. And then I have another one for worship jams where I'll be walking around you guys and I'll be like raising my hands up and I'll be, my kids think I'm crazy. Sometimes they do come in and dance with me though and sing the songs. It's super cute. But being able to create music that's relevant for you, that gets you super psyched up and that enables you to, um, to be able to let go of whatever it is that's going on and to be able to thrive through that stress. So I feel like I've been talking for 45 hours at this point. I am going to turn it over to my beautiful dear friend, Brittany, where she's going to talk about thriving through chemical stress. Britt. Love it. Thanks, Deb. That was so powerful. I'm going to go ahead and switch out the video. Um, I was so inspired by both of what Becca shared and what you shared. I just get so fired up about this topic because it, it really is truly the thing that connects us all. And I think it's the number one issue that everybody's facing, right? We all have different health issues or financial issues or um, blocks that we might be dealing with, but they all are under the umbrella of stress. And so stress is a universal topic that I really believe speaks to every person, no matter where they're at in their life. And so um, it's inter interesting because I just was doing a coaching call with my community yesterday and um, we really got into the toxicity of the mental stress. And so I'm going to tie in chemical, but I'm also going to kind of weed it into what Becca and Deborah talked about, because I don't think that stress can be um, dismantled into different categories without it all being connected because we're exposed, we're energetic, physical, spiritual, emotional beings. And so everything that we're exposed to affects us, the nutrition affects us, the mindset, the environment, the habits, all of those things. But some of the notes that I just wrote down when Deb was talking was your habits will define your results, right? So your habits are how you're feeling right now is a result of your habits. So if you are super, super stressed out, it means that you have a habit cycle of creating that environment that's going to reproduce those results over and over and over again in your life. And for a lot of people, we're never taught to take full responsibility for our results in our culture. And so we keep thinking, why are we so stressed out? Why does this continue to happen to me? And we be, just become a statistic within that mess. And you really go into victim mode. And one of the reasons we do these podcasts is because we want to give you the tools and tips to, to rise you up out of that. So your habits will define where you're currently at. So if you are feeling a lot of stress in your body right now, if you're having a lot of stress or results in your life, and you can really relate to some of the things that Deb and Becca shared, it's because your habits are not in alignment with where you really wanna go. So the first thing I would tell you to do from a chemical standpoint is check your habits because your habits are actually chemical. And so I wanna break down what, what I mean by that. Like how can a habit be chemical in your body? Your, a habit is chemical because every time you do that situation, 
over and over and over again, it actually produces a chemical reaction in your body that's either positive or negative. And like Deb talked about, we actually become addicted to those loops. And those loops can either cause more stress or those loops can start to heal and rebalance our body. And so there are a lot of thought leaders and there's a lot of books. Dr. David Hawkins, like Deb mentioned, is a phenomenal thought leader that talks about the process of this. And one of the other books that I literally just talked about yesterday, I told my whole community to order it, is Power Versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins. So letting go is really great and Power Versus Force because most people are acting in force. They're resisting the thing that they, they don't want. They're resisting the financial stress. They're resisting the health issue. They're resisting the bad toxic relationship. They're fighting it. And so they're staying in that stress bubble when we have to step back into our power and really realign our habits on a daily basis. And so how do we do that? We do that through prayer and meditation. We do that through affirmation. We do that through changing the structure of our day. Now, is the chemical structure of our environment super important? 100%. So what does that mean? It means that you need to become aware of everything that's going in and on your body. And Becca broke down a lot of the triggers for her that, that are really powerful. I think for a lot of women, you know, the, the sugar, the caffeine, now I'm sitting here drinking a cup of coffee. So I definitely can't tell you to, you know, give up the caffeine, but are you drinking a pot or are you drinking one cup? What kind of coffee are you drinking? What are you putting in your coffee? So are you using organic products? Are you using chemical creamers that are a few ingredients away from plastic? Like those things will affect your body's ability to adapt to stress and, and overcome stress. So if you choose, if you love your coffee, have your coffee, but choose high quality, high vibe ingredients that are going to go in it. So this is organic espresso with organic local honey and organic almond milk with a little bit of cinnamon. That's the way I like my coffee. You'll never see me use a toxic conventional creamer that's filled with GMOs and neurotoxins that are going to negatively affect my brain chemistry. So when we're talking about chemicals, you might be a gum chewer. Now, this, is, this might seem so far off for people, but this is actually one of the things that I really, I see so many women doing this because chewing gum is a nervous habit that women have when they're stressed out. If you've ever noticed it, when women are stressed, they reach in their purse, they put on their lip gloss, and they pop a piece of gum in their mouth. The number one ingredient in most conventional gum is aspartame or sucralose. Now, why are those things important to your stress level? They're important to your stress level because they are a chemical compound that was never meant to go into the human body, and it actually crosses your blood-brain barrier, and it leads to depression, suicidal thoughts, hormonal imbalances, cancer, uh, arthritis, you name it. Aspartame has been linked to over 99 different health disorders and diseases. And when you chew gum, it's so close to you. It goes right into your saliva and it goes right into your brain. And then women wonder why, like, oh my gosh, I had an organic salad for lunch. I drank my kombucha and then I ate some gum after. Like, why am I having these depressive suicidal thoughts? It's, it's literally because the gum that's sitting in your purse. So I know that might sound insane to some people that have maybe not studied this, but it's little things like that, the chemical reactions of the things that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to every day, it's a compound effect and it starts to add up in the body on a cellular basis. And then we get, we get cellular overwhelm and we get cellular debris that's built up and then we have a health problem and we have a health crisis. So the chemical for me, this is the way I think about stress. The chemical reaction of stress in your body is twofold. It's what we're ingesting, what we're injecting, which I can talk about that in a second, ingesting and injecting. Okay. So those are two ways that chemicals come into the body. And then it's the, the conscious thought patterns. So it's the habits and the emotional aspect that Becca and Deb broke down. And those two things added together, you have, you have collateral damage happening in the body at that point. And so a lot of times when I'm talking to them, okay, what, what are you ingesting or what have you injected into your body? Now, people might be listening to this being like, what the heck? What, why would I inject anything to my body? Um, well, when's the last time you got a flu shot? Did you go and get a pneumococcal vaccine? Um, did you allow your, your doctor to write you a bunch of scripts and you don't know the side effect of the medication? Are you on birth control? Birth control pills are highly chemically toxic for women and they promote massive stress in the body. Now, I'm not saying that you should not use some sort of birth control. I'm saying that you should educate yourself about the effects of the birth control that you're currently using because the chemical reaction of those birth, most of those pills will have a negative chemical reaction, stress reaction on the body, and they can throw the body into a tailspin of stress. And one of the, the biggest things that we're seeing 
in terms of a health crisis for women right now is we're seeing adrenal fatigue. Like 10, 15 years ago, you never saw women talking about adrenal fatigue, right? It was like, we didn't even, people didn't even know what the adrenal glands did. <laughs> like they didn't even like, it wasn't any, unless you were a doctor, or you were treating that. People didn't talk about now when we're like, oh, I have adrenal fatigue. I have fibromyalgia. I have autoimmune. It's this chronic epidemic of stress related, stress induced disease and illness, chemical, emotional toxicity. And so you have to start to look at what have you been exposed to? Okay. So that could be past. Like what did you allow to be injected into your body at some point? What are you currently taking? And then what are you currently doing and thinking every day? And it's in those three categories that you can really start to see a trend of where you might need to shift stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, a medication is never going to be appropriate in some circumstances. Of course, there are certain circumstances where a pharmaceutical medication might be a good idea for you. But however, I don't believe that's the norm. And, and me personally, like, that's not a, a route that I would ever personally take. I just had... Uh, a pretty serious back injury last week. I was bedridden for a couple of days. I went to the chiropractor. I restructured my thoughts. I identified why I was having that stress or why I was having that reaction in my body, which it was related to emotional stress. And the back actually, and Deb knows this because this is what she does in her office all the time, is the emotional effect of having your lower back go out is not trusting in the process of life and having a lot of fear and having a lot of stress about what's happening in the world because your back is like kind of your, your core to like keep you solid, right? And so all of these things were happening and I was able to identify, okay, what's the root cause? How do I fix it? How do I change it? How do I get better? And I was able to get better in about a week. So it, it was a process of I didn't have to take any pharmaceuticals. I didn't have to take any pain medication. I dealt with the situation and I made the appropriate steps to release it. So you can do that with any situation in your life that's stress related. And I will guarantee that every current health issue you have or every current issue you have in your life right now can be related back to stress. And then you're perpetuating the cycle because like Deb talked about, you're thinking about the worst case scenario or what's going to happen, or you're living in the future. If you live, if you choose to live in the present in a state of gratitude, your body can heal and adapt much more quickly than if you're, if you are in anxiety, stress, and overwhelm, you're actually constantly in a state of fight or flight. So think about it this way on a chemical basis in the body. Most people will wake up to an alarm before they're ready to get up after they haven't had a restful night of sleep. Like Becca broke down. A lot of people have you know, different sleep issues because of stress in their life. And they wake up to an alarm. They jump out of bed in a state of panic. They're already in fight or flight. They don't have any grounding techniques to, to bring them back into their spirit, back into their body. They're not starting their day in prayer and meditation and breathing. They're running to the coffee pot. They're pouring a, pot, a, a cup of coffee that's mostly toxic. They're putting toxic creamer in that. They're drinking that coffee on an empty stomach. Now their fight or flight responses are, are in overdrive because now they just added caffeine to it. So the body's like, ah, you know, freaking out. Then they get in their car, driving to a job that they dislike, sitting in traffic, worried about the next bill that they're going to pay or whatever is happening in their family life. And they, they're, you have had zero time to reset your nervous system. And of course you feel like crap, right? Of course you then have a health issue that's, that's compounded and becoming something that that eventually turns into cancer. It eventually turns into autoimmune. It eventually turns into fibromyalgia. First of all, doctors don't even know what fibromyalgia is. That's why they just named it that because they don't even know the root cause. The root cause is stress and imbalance in the body. It's inflammation. So all of these things start to stack up and then you have a health crisis. Then you have a health problem where instead what we teach on, on these talks is what is the root cause? How can you address it? And what are some holistic approaches that you can take responsibility for without having to run to a medical professional to get a script? What are some things that you can do right now to rebalance your body? And so some of the techniques that I use, and I'll, I'll literally teach it to you guys right now. It's super, super easy. And I don't remember if we've done this on other calls, but if we have, I'm going to repeat it because it's something you can always relearn, but I am a huge believer in emotional freedom technique. It's a tapping mechanism that taps the, the, the um, energetic pathways of the body. And it actually reproduces a different chemical reaction in your body than you currently have. So for example, if you were having chronic stress, if you were having fear about a certain issue, you could actually tap that into your body and, and start to create some new neural pathways around it and also release the stuff that's blocked. So for example, 
say you were having stress, you had a stress induced headache. Okay. So you could tap and you can say, even though I have this headache, I love and appreciate my body. Even though I have this headache, my body is in great alignment. Even though I have this headache, I love and appreciate my body. Even though I have this headache, my body is in perfect alignment. Even though, so I am constantly tapping. Like my kids, like Deb is worshiping in, in her house and she's rocking to her music, which I do that too. Um, I'm tapping. And my kids are always like, why are you always tapping, mom? I'm like, because I'm tapping out the stuff that I don't want and I'm tapping good, positive, new, new neural pathways into my body. So anytime I have a doubt, like a negative financial, uh, you know, old blueprint come up or a negative concept about my body or whatever. These are like old limiting beliefs that will just come up in your brain. I tap them out. I'm constantly tapping. Okay. And so you can do that. It's a really simple technique. You can go on YouTube. You can Google other practitioners um, that are teaching different tapping techniques. You can do it, you know, when you're stressed out <laughs> at the market or wherever you are, you can tap and there's different parts of the body that you can tap. And so that is a really, really easy way to lower your stress. And I really encourage you to do it. It's something that I do multiple, multiple times a day when I feel myself getting stressed. Because just because you become aware of what we're talking about, it doesn't mean you're going to master it overnight. I don't think anyone's ever like 100% mastering stress living in the world that we live in. I think that's an impossible standard to live up to, but you're going to get better at managing it. And you're going to get better at being aware of the things that stress you out so that you can be proactive and you can start to create different habits that are more in alignment with where you're going rather than being a stressed out basket case that's stuck in overwhelm and not feeling well. And like Deb talked about, your environment will be a byproduct of what's here. And then chemically, your body will respond to what's here and to what's here. So whatever is in your environment and whatever is in your brain will show up in your life over and over and over again. And you will become a self-fulfilling prophecy of either being, you know, a poop magnet because you'll meet those people. You'll meet people that are poop magnets where you're, they're like, why is this always happened to me? I don't feel well. I got sick again, or this is, oh my goodness, this is blah, blah, blah. you know, and those people are very energetically draining to be around. Now it doesn't mean that you're not going to face challenges in your life. You'll have challenges and then you have people that you reach out to like Deb, Becca, those are my people. I have a group of people that if I'm going through a challenge, I'm going to reach out, you know, identify the challenge and then affirm that I'm going to rise above it. I'm going to figure out a way to get through it. And so you need to have that circle of influence. Like Deb talked about those five people. Those are super, it's super, super critical. So if you're around a bunch of people that are attracting nonsense into their life, it's time to re-identify that. But the fastest way you can do that for you is to start to become aware of the chemical reactions that you have in your body. So when you start to feel stress, the minute you start to feel that coming up in your body, stop, take a deep breath and go, what, what am I thinking about? Or what am I exposing myself to that's causing the stress? Because in that moment, you then have the power to change it because you can go, oh, well, okay, I was, um, you know, getting my kids ready. And then I was thought about this bill that I have to pay. And so I just had a body reaction or I started to think about this person and the phone call I have to make later with this person or the fact that I have to be around this person. And I just had a chemical reaction in my body. So you can start to identify what are those things. So then you can take action to release them. So what I would do in that moment, so say it was like, oh, I have to meet with this person that stresses me out or this family member, wh whoever it is. I would take a deep breath and I would exhale it out and I would tap and I would say, even though I have the stress, my body's in total alignment. Even though I have the stress, I love and appreciate my body. Even though I'm feeling the stress, I will send that person love and gratitude. Even though I'm feeling the stress, I will send that person love and gratitude, whatever it is. And you're just going to tap. Now that might sound super simple. I promise you, if you commit to doing this for the next week, two weeks, month, you will start to see major, major shifts in your results, in your mindset, in how you show up, in how you deal with stressful situations, because stressful situations will always come about. It's how we deal with it and how we let, let those things affect us long term. And if you talk to a person that's highly stressed, they're going to probably tell you stories of things that have happened to them way in the past. Like, oh, I'm having a bad day. Why is that? Oh, well, it's been a really bad year. I got on the phone with a, a gal the other day that wanted to, to release some weight. And I said, tell me about your goals. And she goes, well, I've had a, a terrible life for 10 years. And I was like, wow, that's a long time. 
Tell me more about that. What specifically happened to you over the course of 10 years? And so we're breaking it down into these little moments where that's become her identity, where the minute I got on the phone with her, she spoke into existence that her life had been really crappy for 10 years. So imagine like she's constantly living in this space of stress of things that happened 10 years ago. She's still reliving them on a chemical and emotional basis every day. So I want you to get really honest with yourself right now and ask yourself, are you doing that to yourself? What is an old story, an old negative story that you're running over and over and over again in your mind about your health, about your lifestyle, about your finances, about your relationships that you could change today, that you could become consciously aware of, and you could start to speak into existence. Like Deb talked about, like speaking life, like speak life into yourself instead of speaking disappointment and, you know, guilt and shame and apathy, like start to speak life into yourself in your own self like you don't have to share you don't have to go post it on social media you don't even have to tell anybody in your life just start to become consciously aware of how you speak to yourself because that will start to change the chemical reaction in your body because here's the reality you can change all your products that you're cleaning your house with you can change everything dietary wise that's going into your body you can change your environment get super organized get all the things that you need and if you don't change this if you don't change your mindset, you're only going to get so far. Those things will help and they're all super important. And that's why we talk about everything on these podcasts is because it's all interconnected. But if you don't change this, what you're thinking about as your number one, as your, your main foundation for raising your chemical reaction in your body, then you're missing the boat. So I really encourage you to, to start to study that. Get the book, The Letting Go. Start to study David Hawkins. Go on YouTube. Watch people like Dr. Joe Dispenza. If you don't know who Dr. Joe Dispenza is, write his name down and flag all of his amazing YouTube content. He has free meditation guide. If you don't know how to meditate, you don't know how to calm your body, go pull up Dr. Joe Dispenza's work and just have it playing. Sometimes I'll take a bubble bath at the end of the night. It's one of my habits. I like to put my kids to bed. And I like to, to tune out from social media and work. And I put on um, an empowering YouTube clip, typically from Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I sit in the tub and I just listen. And I just don't let my mind flutter. Like I just listen to his voice and I listen to what he's saying. And I just let it kind of soak into my subconscious. And that's a habit. That's a habit. That's an empowering habit that I've learned to help lower my stress because his teachings are so powerful. So there's a lot of free resources that just like this, the, these talks that we do, we do this for free. But if you're really committed to raising your life to the next level and you're really committed to addressing a lot of this, then I encourage you to not just listen to these. I encourage you to connect with us and get plugged into our communities that we have that teach people these skills over and over and over again until they become new habits. And one of the things that Deb mentioned that's so, so important is the financial stress piece. And that's one of the things that we teach women and families and men, how to empower their lives and how to start to create residual income so that there's a, there's less of a gap of the stress there. And so actually tonight, if you're watching this recording, this might be, you might watch it tomorrow or whatever, but if you're on live or you're watching this recording today, um, I will actually be teaching how to build residual income tonight at 7 p.m. on another Zoom. So if you're interested in that, you can reach out or you can get the recording because that will also be recorded and we'll be breaking down in detail. How does that work? What does that look like? What, how do you even do that, right? Because it's a new concept for people. So those are really the things that I wanted to share with you guys as we come up to, to our, our end time here. Um, but create, here's the last thing that I wrote down that I want to share. Create a fortress of peace around you. So to lower stress chemically, emotionally, physically, financially, you have to create a fortress of peace around you in your life. And that has to do with your health, your mindset, your finances, and your relationships. And if you start to identify the things that are not bringing you peace, then you can cross those off the list. Like Deb said, you just whoop, cross it off the list, become aware of it so you can change it and start to surround yourself with people that are going to speak life into you rather than stress. So with that, I'm going to throw it back to to back to close this out. Thank you guys for tuning in and um, thank you for being open to receive this information. Wow. I loved all of that. You and Deborah, just powerful, powerful information. I hope that everybody had some takeaways and 
learned something. We hope you found this of value and we hope that you'll implement this and start small. Don't feel like you have to do it all at once because it's overwhelming. It's literally baby steps. And once you create those habits, they'll become habits and you'll just be so grateful you made that shift. So you have questions, you need any assistance, please reach out to all, each of us. Like we're happy to help you and no question is looked down upon. Like please, if there's any questions, reach out. We're happy to help you. We hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.